shush. Can you can you let mommy make a video, please? No. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Angie's Seams and Pockets. And I am so excited to be making a video again. It has been a very crazy year. You might hear a lot of cat meowing in the background, and I hope you are okay with it. We got two new kittens recently, and they have, um, I guess, separation anxiety, and if they don't see me for a while, or I don't touch them, they start doing this, which is meowing and screaming and making noise. If you haven't already seen, um, I started a TikTok channel, and I've been getting a little bit of a following there, which I am so, 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 so thankful for. Thank you all so much for your love and support. I've also opened an Etsy shop recently because I posted a video of my, you know, 3D printed earrings that I just made for myself, and then it kind of exploded and so that's the thing now there will be a link in the description below if you are interested enough of that uh, the reason why I'm here making this video is because on TikTok I made a video of like me just gathering up a skirt I was gathering it for a costume um, for Halloween I had a couple of comments on it that kind of spurred a conversation over different types of gathering methods this was just one that I personally chose to use for this project the first person who made a comment about different types of methods it was by Natasha Baker in 1995 and they said don't mean to be negative but isn't that hard to pull and wouldn't it be easier to do a straight stitch and then I got a comment by Weister IA who said you could just use two rows of running stitches and use those together then you secure it. If you're watching this without seeing that video you at least know what the heck I'm talking about. Let's hop into the gathering part. I'm gonna be rearranging my camera and setting some stuff up so I'll be back in a second. While the camera was off, I quickly cut up a couple pieces of fabric. This is just a lightweight poly cotton blend. I find that gathering lightweight fabrics is a lot easier than medium or even heavyweight fabrics, so that's what I went for. I wanted this to be um, kind of like a nice experiment, so the fabric is the same, the stitch length is the same, except for, you know, when I switch it to a zigzag. Um, the only thing that would be different is the method that I'm using. This is a brand new machine, I just, I'm still learning it. My wife gifted it to me as an early Yule slash um, anniversary gift, and I am so grateful for her. So the first method that I'll show you was the one that Natasha Baker mentioned, which is the straight stitch method, where you have your stitch length at the highest, so it's like a basting stitch. When I'm gathering fabric, um, I like to leave a little bit of an extra tail at the end so I can make sure that I have more to grab. The second method is basically the exact same as what we did, except we're adding another stitch next to the other one. I like to put it on the left because if I'm, you know, making a garment, I want to make sure that the second stitch is not um, crossing my seam allowance. So I'm going to put my first stitch exactly where I did the um, one for the piece of fabric right before this. Again, leaving a bit of an extra tail, and then for my second stitch, I'm going to make sure that I have it going the same exact way, so my bobbin thread is going the same way, so I'm not flipping my um, fabric to the wrong side. And I try to get them as close to each other as possible without actually crossing them, um, so usually that would be like an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch. And again, I left an extra bit on the tail, so I have my double stitch here. So with my last method here, I have my width set at 6, which is the highest that I can go. My length is set at 2.5, um, and then I have a heavy-duty thread. And what I'm attempting to do is catch it between the stitches. It's finished. It kind of has a bit of a look like this. So I have my straight stitch, I have my double straight stitch, and then I have the zigzag method that I used um, in my video. So we'll start with the straight stitch first. This is the one that was mentioned by Natasha Baker. I personally like to secure one of the ends tight before I begin to gather the fabric. This is to ensure that I don't accidentally pull the fabric too much and make it loose on one end um, and then I go to the other end and this is where I created my tail so I go ahead and separate it with my nails um, so I go with the bobbin thread and the way you can tell where the bobbin thread is is you will usually be able to see a little bit of a looping on this side it's kind of hard to show on camera um, if you have a hard time telling between bobbin thread and upper thread I would also recommend maybe having both of them be a slightly different color so like let's say if this was um, maroon um, 
thread I was using on the upper on the bottom I might use like a brighter red so that way I know exactly which one's the bobbin which one's the upper thread so together you just kind of lightly start pulling and as you can see it's already starting to gather up and then you sort of travel the gather along and there you go now for the double stitch method we're basically gonna do exactly the same thing that I just did with the single stitch method we will go to one end secure the ends and then on the other end I'm gonna separate the bobbin from the upper thread and then once you do that I like to personally secure the upper thread to each other so I don't accidentally mix up the bobbin threads below. The reason why we do the bobbin thread and not the upper thread when we do the straight stitch method is if you yank on the upper thread it will lock the stitch and so you won't be able to kind of pull the thread through. Um, so with the double I find that occasionally I accidentally pull on the incorrect stitch and to make sure I don't do that I will just secure the upper threads to each other and cut off the extra bit. So with this one you just kind of do the same thing you did. Um, the reason why some people prefer this method over using the single is because it kind of creates a more fluid gather um, and I'll show you the two of them side by side in a moment. It takes longer to add a second stitch versus just keeping the single one but in the end it makes it easier to construct your garment altogether. so some people will prefer the double over the single more and personally Personally, I prefer the double over the single for this exact reason as well. So there's that, and then I will show you the comparison with the single stitch. So as you can see, this is kind of a little, um, the edges of the fabric are kind of all over the place. Some are pointing in, some are pointing out, and with this one, they're all basically kind of going the same direction. If I'm going to put this through the Maya machine to, let's say, add on a bodice that's not gathered, this would be a flatter surface to work on versus this one, because sewing over this bundled mess is a little harder than sewing over something that already has a pre-existing flatter edge. And then lastly we will go over the zigzag stitch that I showed in the video. So for of course like all the other ones before this I always secure the one end to itself to make sure that when I start pulling on things the other end is not coming undone. And then with this one you just find the heavy duty thread that you already used. So as you can see here I basically created a casing for my thread so I can gather it and then ungather it in seconds. Um, the pros to this is gathering. If you hate gathering and think that it takes too long with the straight stitch methods this is a perfect method for you because this literally takes you know less than a second. These are not the longest pieces of fabric. So so gathering on these is pretty simple with the single and the double um, straight stitch methods but I find that if I'm gathering a lot of fabric for like a very big skirt for production sometimes it takes forever and I just go to the zigzag method because it takes a lot less time to do and then you know if I want to secure it I kind of just tie the ends to themselves and then the gathers cannot come undone. And that's the end of that. Thank you all so much for joining me and I hope you were able to take something from this and apply it to your own personal sewing if you didn't know some of these methods already. And with that, go forth and sew my lovelies. I will see you all in my next video. Bye!